Hey there, and welcome to another Cry for Attention. As you can see, there have certainly been some changes since last time. That's right, there's all this crud junking up the display, get out of here! This was me experimenting with merging multiple sprites into one model, which should help prevent performance like... in the future. But hey, it looked like it's getting there. And then, of course, we have the other obvious change, the lighting. The lighting. I made something similar to this a few months ago, but with one difference being the maths behind it. Back then, proper 3D maths was still a bit scary for me, and I bungled some equations together on the fly. But now, after doing graphics coursework in December, I feel much more secure in it. This has let me get proper angle of incidence lighting working, along with coloured lights as well. I had planned for other lighting details too, like specular highlights. But the code didn't work first time, and so I gave up. Not that this lighting worked first time either, but uh, that was more fixable. I'm thinking about other forms of lighting I can add in the future too. A few years ago now I was playing about with this uh, line of sight illumination, and I could use similar techniques here to get lamps, fire, and other point sources of illumination working. I've learned a lot more about programming and graphics since then, so the problems you see on screen probably won't happen again. No promises though. Another big change from the previous attempt was the tool I used to make the normal maps. Normal maps are images that take the x, y, and z directions the surface of the pixel would be facing if it were in 3D, and encodes them into the r, g, and b channels of an image. Higher red means more to the right, lower red means more to the left. The same with green for y and blue for z. Due to bungling the 3D into what is still essentially a 2D drawing environment, Z is for height now, and I cannot apologise for this enough. Before, I would have to draw the colours out by hand, making use of funky blend effects to try and speed the process up, and I, I, I never liked doing pixel art much, even in the best of times to start with, but trying to draw something abstract like angles and being able to have to look at the colours and like, hey, yeah, this, this looks fine, it's, yeah, that just wasn't it, chief. And so, now I made this. This handy tool lets you draw height right onto images. Down here you will see our all-in-one solution create the normal map for you, no complex artisanal skill needed. And over here we have our light playground. Change the lighting on your tile in real time and speed up your workflow now for only $69.99. Batteries and user guide not included, random crashes may occur. But yeah, this is the uh, tool I made for this. You can access all of the tiles in an image and I can use a variety of draw modes to set the height on a grid. The grid is actually offset by one so that each pixel has four height fields to draw from and then it tries to calculate the angle of that slope, which it can then add to the normal map down here. And then over here, you can change the lighting positions as well as color to see if you like the change. I use this to get the normal maps for the tile set I used in this demo, but you can really tell that the tile set wasn't made with this feature in mind. A lot of the tiles are very flat, and the changes in elevation are too short yet too extreme for the effect to really look very good. When I update the tile set I use, that's definitely going to be something I have to keep in mind. To be fair though, this tile set has lasted me for over a year now, and I've tried doing things to it that I didn't even know were possible when I made it. Well, when I use this tool to make a tile set for any game, I'll still probably need to go in and make some changes by hand. After all, one height change will affect all four pixels around it, and while this is certainly realistic, what has realism got in the way of making a good game? So, back into pain.net I will have to go. So, uh, what's next? Again, point lights sound interesting, could spice up cave-like environments more than static light JPEGs. Also, my graphics coursework included a mode for voxels, like 3D pixels, like Minecraft. And since now I have the tiles heights in a block format, adding in hard shadows from the sunlight is an interesting possibility. I do this by running beams from the light to the target voxel and seeing if it hits. However, at the end of the day, my aim here is to make a game, and considering the lack of any <laughs> fun here, um, maybe these upgrades will uh, have to go on the back burner. A proper animation system and getting the view acting smoothly again sounds like a more responsible thing to do. 
Actually, the uh, responsible thing would probably be to work on the game project my uni has set me and my friends to do, which is worth 30% uh, of the year. But like what years of evolution has taught us, running away from the problems is always a great idea. Anyway, I hope you'll watch that stuff too and do the fun YouTube person stuff. My Linux rant made uh, two people unsubscribe. Yeah, uh, keep crying. Keep crying. It still sucks. <clears throat> uh... Buttons, graphs, whatever weird justification the cool kids are using to pressure people into subscribing these days. Uh, please, look, the numbers are now tied to my self-worth. I need them to go up or else I cry myself to sleep. And while you're still watching YouTube to procrastinate whatever it needs doing, why not watch one of these puppies? It's fine if you've seen them already. Maybe it'll have something you missed. Who knows? Better, better go back and watch again carefully, right? Um, anyway, I'll be back in uh, two weeks to two months. Consistency is for nerds. Goodbye.